tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Lots of boxes, my friends. Exactly 1000. I know that because I placed them in the scene. It's a scene which contains of 1000 boxes, they're basically mesh copies, and, uh, and a skydome light, just one light source. And now you'll be surprised when I render this. You see, a thousand people, actually two thousand people, because they're couples. Let's get a little bit closer. Here you can see them. And they're hundreds below the top ones. So it's quite an amazing thing <laughs> with one thousand couples sitting on the gray boxes and being rendered in just a few seconds. If we go to the hyper shader to see what kind of shaders are involved here, we see only a Lambert shader, which is basically not in the scene really. There is something odd about this scene, and the scene is very uh, lean as well. It doesn't have um, a lot of geometry in here, only a sky dome light, light and what is called a mesh instancer, and a hidden object here. And we're going to talk about this. I create a different scene for you, but uh, you, it will lead you basically to a similar result. Let's create a new scene now. Reactivate the grid. And uh, we'll import a person. So we go to Windows, General Editors, Content Browser. And here we have our standard people, modeling people. and Let's choose um, Sean today. He lands in the scene very big, very tall. That's because we're in dimensions of centimeters and he arrives in dimensions of meters, so we can scale him down like this. And uh, we'll give him a friend. For example, Windows, General Editors, Content Browser. I think we have other sculpting base bipeds and here we have for example the human body so the human body lands in the scene as well and we scale the body down so let's make an, an arrangement of the two Let's leave the shaders as they are. This kind of blind shading here, pretty boring of uh, the big guy and uh, the texture of the other one, you can see that he's textured quite nicely. So we have a natural person and a very artificial person. So now we have these two objects, they're quite complex really. As you can see, quite this mesh is not as dense as this one, but uh, we leave them just like they are. And we won't create a light, we do just nothing else, just um, select both of them. And now we go to Arnold and create a stand-in. That's the first trick. And we're actually not creating a, st a stand-in, we first need to export a stand-in. Click the option box and just use the default settings, export selection. And you need to give it a name and we call them two guys. Now we can delete the guys. Actually, we can create a new scene. And we go to Arnold now. Instead of creating any kind of geometry, we go to Arnold, go to back to stand-in. That's where we just came from. And now we don't export a stand-in because we already exported one. We create one from the export. And you click on the option box. And here we have two guys, ASS, Arnold's stand-in trade or whatever. 
And uh, the frustrating view is this box here. <laughs> That's the box. Uh, you've seen many of them in the beginning of this tutorial. It's actually actually a very nice box. We need a light uh, and we create a sky dome light and we don't want to see the representation of the light here. So we deactivate it here. And the amazing thing about this box is when we render it now, we see the two guys here. And uh, the rendering is extremely fast, as you can see. And again, in the hypershade window, you don't see the shaders we had. And uh, remember, the, the tiny guy has lots of shaders because of his uh, complex texture here. Here in the outliner, you see only one object, geometry-wise. It's called stand-in. It's not a real geometry. You cannot really manipulate it. Uh, the right mouse button doesn't give you any polygon modeling things like select edges or so, or delete faces or whatever. It's just a representation of our uh, interesting geometry combination here. Uh, now we want to create a mesh network. Uh, mesh is always good for creating many, many, many instances of uh, one object. Instead of copying this one uh, a thousand times, we can use mesh and it will do it on the fly. The standard way to go there is uh, mesh here and then click here. It will produce an error message because MASH only accepts meshes. That means polygon objects and not strange objects like this box here. But um, when you go to the MASH uh, menu here, you find it when you're under FX here because it's a special effects um, module. MASH, create MASH network and you use the option box. Then you can basically throw anything into the MASH network and you need to click here, instanza. Not mesh, not a polygon object, but an instance, anything, basically. Here you can change the arrangement. We just uh, keep the arrangement as uh, in the default settings, apply it and reset for next start um, the settings so we get uh, back to the mesh uh, thing here. And uh, well, the standard thing is uh, 10 instances here. In the waiter, you can see the number. And <laughs> the amazing thing now is when you render it, Arnold Render, you have, well, 20 of these guys here. What we can do now is play with these things. And you see the amazing speed of rendering because we're dealing with instances and not with textures of uh, complex geometry, really. OK, you, uh, you're you under Mesh here. If you don't see that, go to select the Mesh instance here, or whatever, and then, you, and then you find Mesh here. And uh, you start with a randomization. So you click on Random, add a random node, and you already see that the 10 of them are distributed randomly now. We run the rendering and here we see our objects. We don't need to see the grid. So we have 10 of them distributed randomly, more or less. So we go back to the distribute node. Instead of 10, we type in 500. And this is really amazing. Imagine how fast this is rendering. Now let's go back to the distance here. We have a distance. So we can make them spread further apart. We can center the distribution so it jumps to the origin of our scene. And we have lots and lots of instances now of our objects. You can distribute them uh, rotation-wise. So you can rotate them all in other directions. You can animate that, of course. Set keyframes with the right mouse click, set, set key. Uh, you can scale them differently, for example, in Y, so you have bigger ones and smaller ones. Uh, but um, you need the random node in order to do this randomly. So the scale Y would be like this. Of course, these they stretch uh, quite oddly, and this is not uh, what you want here. You need to scale them uh, in all three dimensions equally. Rotation random. position random in this direction here we can raise this value to 100 if we like so we have a really wide distribution 
and I think I prefer this image to the image I showed you at the very beginning of this tutorial. It's really nice. You can get close and still. It's rendering at high speed, really. Now I add a 330 degree image to the color of the sky dome light. I need to go to File here and find a 360 degree image. For example, this winter image here, which I took with my drone. You find lots of them on the internet. And uh, I need more light now. So I pump up the intensity from two, from, from one to maybe three. And then I even see the backgrounds, Cologne town in the background now with our massive scene of 500, actually 1000 characters. Renders at high speed is really amazing. And having said this, I wish you a very good day with lots of instances.